Welcome or welcome back to Barrio Tales. Today's video will be about the gangster profile of Victor Saldana. Victor is from the Inglewood 13 gang in Inglewood, California. Victor's moniker is Little Magic. Inglewood 13 is a predominantly Mexican gang who beefs with Lennox 13, but Inglewood 13 also beefs with black gangs like Neighborhood Piru as well as Queen Street Bloods. Inglewood 13 refers to Neighborhood Piru as Naps or Dairu. Victor Little Magic Saldana had taken part in a series of crimes within 24 hours. On February 17, 2014, Gilberto Soltero parked his silver Ford F-150 pickup truck at his home in Inglewood. The following morning, he noticed his truck was missing and he contacted law enforcement to file a report concerning his stolen truck. On February 18, 2014, Christian Rios was walking in an alley in Inglewood carrying a backpack, a cell phone, and headphones. Rios saw a gray or black pickup truck pull up with the driver's side window down. He saw a Hispanic male in the driver's seat who was 25 to 30 years old. Rios saw a second man wearing a hoodie standing in front of the truck. He was approximately 5 feet 7 inches tall and skinny. The man with the hoodie appeared to be robbing a third man. He was holding the third man by the shirt and hitting him with something small and gray in his hand. Rios walked away, but soon was followed by a truck with the two men inside. The truck stopped near Rios, and the man with the hoodie exited. He said he was Bones from Inglewood 13. The driver said he was Little Magic. Bones pointed a gray revolver at Rios' head while the driver remained in the driver's seat. Bones demanded Rios empty his pockets. Rios complied, removing his cell phone and headphones. Bones removed Rios' backpack and demanded Rios place the backpack and items from his pocket on the passenger seat of the truck. Rios again complied. Bones instructed Rios not to say anything to the police or else they would get Rios. On the afternoon of February 18, 2014, Theron Domino had asked his friend, Akeem Leggins, to meet him by the bus stop on Venice Way and Beach Avenue in the city of Inglewood. Domino arrived at the bus stop by scooter and Akeem Leggins arrived on a bicycle. Domino had not seen Leggins with the weapon that day and did not know whether Leggins was armed. Domino and Leggins spoke and as they were preparing to leave, Domino noticed a silver Ford or Dodge pickup truck stop at an adjacent stop sign, drive part way into the intersection, then abruptly drive in reverse towards them. A Hispanic man who was approximately 5 feet 10 or 11 inches tall and in his early 20s exited the truck and said something Domino believed was gang related. The man reached from his waistband and Domino observed him holding a silver object that appeared to be revolver. Leggins said, oh shit, and Domino turned and ran away from the truck. As he ran, he heard four or five gunshots. Domino called 911 and reported some Mexicans got out of a silver pickup truck, shot Leggins, and peeled out. Where Leggins was shot is an area claimed by the neighborhood Piru's gang, approximately one mile away from Inglewood 13 territory. Leggins had four gunshot wounds to his back. Domino reported there were two Hispanic men, approximately 20 to 25 years old or younger, and the one who pulled the trigger had a mohawk. That afternoon, Donald Wilcott was driving on Beach Avenue when he heard gunshots and saw a truck speed past him. Both occupants of the truck were Hispanic men. The passenger had a Mohawk style haircut. When Wilcott reached the stop sign at Beachway, he noticed Leggins slumped over a bicycle. Latia Martin was approaching the stop sign on Beach Avenue in Venice Way. The same afternoon, when she saw a silver truck in the intersection slam on its brakes and drive in reverse quickly towards the bus stop. The driver and passenger were Hispanic men. She also saw four 18 or 19 year old men standing in the area by the intersection, including one on a bicycle. As the truck reversed, some of the men ran. The passenger of the truck jumped out and walked toward the young men. About a second later, he pointed a gun and started shooting. Martin heard the shooter fire four gunshots. The shooter ran back into the truck and the truck drove away. Martin left, then came back around and saw Leggins lying on top of the bicycle. Paramedics arrived on scene and transported Leggins to the hospital, where he was later pronounced dead. Inglewood Police Department Detective Gabriel De La Torre 
was assigned to investigate Legan's death and arrived at the scene the same day. While he was at the scene, he was informed that an individual whom he later learned was Soltero was attempting to report a stolen vehicle that matched the description of the vehicle involved in the shooting. Detective De La Torre returned to the station and interviewed Soltero concerning the theft of his truck. Inglewood Police Senior Forensic Specialist Ron Paul arrived on the scene that evening after Leggins had been transported to the hospital. Paul recovered the bicycle, the scooter, and other items from the scene as evidence. He did not see any weapons or spent cartridges. On February 20, 2014, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Deputy LaShonda Dennis was driving by Soltero's truck near Inglewood when her patrol vehicle alerted her the truck had been reported stolen. She arranged for the truck to be transported to a tow yard. Detective De La Torre was notified Soltero's truck had been recovered and he requested Paul conduct a forensic examination. On February 24, 2014, Paul arrived at the tow yard to process Soltero's truck. He photographed the truck and swabbed the interior, including the stereo for DNA evidence. He observed a backpack in the rear seat. At trial, Soltero identified his truck from the photograph of the interior, but did not recognize the backpack that was inside. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department senior criminologist Amanda Davis analyzed four bullets that had been recovered from Legan's body during an autopsy. She believed the bullets were 22 caliber and could have been fired from a 22 caliber revolver. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department senior criminologist George Howe testified about the DNA samples Paul had collected. The DNA collected from the stereo showed Soltero as a major contributor and Saldana as a possible minor contributor. The DNA profile showed a match rate for Saldana of 1 out of 209 million, meaning out of the population of 209 million unrelated individuals, there would be one individual whose DNA would be a match. In December 2014, Saldana was in custody for an unrelated offense. Detective De La Torre directed a civilian informant to conduct an undercover operation in which the informant shared a jail cell with Saldana. A listening device was placed in the room, and Detective De La Torre recorded the conversation between Saldana and the informant. After the informant built a rapport with Saldana, Detective De La Torre entered the jail cell. As part of a ruse to get Saldana to talk to the informant, Detective De La Torre told Saldana that he was collecting Saldana's DNA sample in connection with the murder of a nap near Beach Avenue in Venice Way. After Detective De La Torre left the cell, Saldana and the informant began speaking about the incident. Saldana described using a 22 caliber revolver, disposing of the firearm, wiping down the car using the shooting, and confirming no shell casings were left at the scene of the shooting. Saldana admitted he had a crime partner in the shooting, but he did not believe his partner would cooperate with the police. Saldana admitted telling Leggins, fuck naps, before shooting him. Saldana boasted that Leggins was on the bike and he's barely trying to turn around. When the informant stated to Saldana, if you got to do time, then it's better to do time for something you did than something you didn't do. Saldana replied, exactly. Saldana told the informant another person was with Leggins at the time of the shooting, but that person ran away when he saw Saldana exit the truck. The other person's back was turned when Saldana shot Leggins. Saldana remained convinced the witness would not be able to identify Saldana because Saldana was wearing a Mohawk-style haircut and his tattoo was covered with a long sleeve shirt. Saldana used this disguise because he knew he was going to shoot Leggins. The following day, he shaved off his mohawk. Detective De La Torre interrupted the conversation and interrogated Saldana separately. He showed Saldana a photographic lineup that included Saldana. Detective De La Torre had circled Saldana's photograph and placed initials next to it to suggest the witness had identified Saldana. De La Torre also showed Saldana a photograph of his homie who he committed the crimes with and the stolen truck and indicated both had been implicated in the shooting. Saldana then returned to the jail cell and told the informant the detective had shown him a photograph of his crimey. Crimey is another word for an accomplice in the truck used in the shooting. Saldana admitted he was guilty of the crime and there was not much he could do but take a deal. When the informant suggested Saldana should try to get a deal, Saldana replied 
he would accept a plea deal for 10 years or even 20 years. But Victor Little Magic Saldana would not take a plea deal. Instead, a jury convicted Victor Saldana of the first degree murder of Akeem Leggins, second degree robbery of Christian Rios, and the unlawful driving or taking of a vehicle of Gilberto Soltero. Victor Little Magic Saldana from Inglewood 13 was sentenced to 50 years to life in prison.